this is going to be a cluster and a half. It's a 12 2. There's another double, had quite a few doubles now. It is exactly 2 o'clock in the morning. Guys, after about an hour and three quarters driving, I've finally arrived here at the carp fishery. Topper Manor, it's called. It's here in Dorset. Whew. I've got to go stretch my legs first, and I'm going to go in, talk to Kia, uh, fishery manager in there, and he's going to show us the most basic, basic carp rig that you can use with boilies and stuff like that. But just look at the gear in my carp. I cannot believe I don't take this much gear when I go shark fishing. So what is it with this carp fishing? Is all this stuff going to be worth it? Let's get inside and show you beginners out there, anybody starting, anybody novices that want to go for bigger carp, the rig you can use and how you set it up. I'm going to run you for a basic carp rig that's going to catch you loads of fish on fisheries like Topper Manor. So I'll start off with a sinking leader which will be attached to your main line via this small loop here. So first of all I'll take my line from my fishing rod and I'll attach it to a sinking leader with a blood knot or a grinner knot or anything that you're confident using. On the leader I'll slide a two ounce inline lead and on the end of the leader is a swivel attached. That swivel will pull into the inline lead. This will give your rig the bolt effect. And basically, once your fish picks up the hook bait, goes to swim away, it'll feel the weight of the hook, and bang, it's hooked and it's running. Uh, I use this also because it's a really, really safe way of fishing. So if you were to get a fish snagged, that can just pop out and that'll slide off the end fish won't be trailing a, trailing a rig and a lead around. So the rigs uh, comprise, comprises of coated braid um, with a small section stripped back. So on the end there we have a size 6 beat point hook, fish blowback style. Um, and what that means is there's a little ring that just holds your hair in place. If a fish picks it up and spits it back out it can always reset itself. And then I thread 15 mil boilie onto the hair with a baiting needle and just stop it from coming off via a boilie stop. And a brilliant way of fishing this is with a PVA bag. The most simple way of doing this is with the funnel web system. And basically what you do is you take a handful of pellets, you put them into the tube like that, Pull the bag out, give it a little pat, get it nice and tight. Twist, two overhand knots, like so. And a second one. And then cut in between the two knots. This will give you a knot for the start of your next bag. And with this, you just simply hook it straight onto your hook. And what I do is I hook it once, I'll twist it and I'll just hook it again. And that will just hook on and that will dissolve as it's PVA and leave a nice parcel of the bait around your hook bait. Um, you're not limited to just pellets in the PVA bag. You can also put crushed boilies, whole boilies, anything dry that's not gonna dissolve the bag from the off. When using PVA, just make sure everything is bone dry. Otherwise it's all gonna just dissolve in your hands before you get it into the water. So today I'm going to send you down uh, Wadmill Lake. Um, it's around about four acres in size, uh, ranges from sort of four to eight foot deep. Um, your best bet this time of year is to look at the margins and the islands as the fish will be patrolling around and there's some good sort of reedy areas around the margins which the fish will get in um, and they're nice and easy to feed. Yeah, chuck a bit of food in and they'll come. 
Um, if you're using more than one rod, it's always worth maybe chucking one in the margins, one on an island, or maybe even one into open water as well, and sort of try and gauge where the fish are. And then that way you can you can put your other your other rods into those positions and you know hopefully catch a few more fish. Uh, this time of year, the fish will be uh, swimming around the surface when the sun's shining. It's well worth taking a few floaters down and giving it a go. Well, guys, the trouble is going in talking to Key. I've now come out with even more tackle and even more bait. My bait is no good. I've got to use these uh, special boilies that Kia's given me, but look at the setting here. We're just cruising down the track here. You can see the sort of scenery we got here. Got a map here. They've told me where to go to guaranteed carp land. Hopefully, there's a double figure carp with my name on it down here. It's breezy, cloudy. Apparently the fish have finished all the spawning. They're trying to pack on some weight after spawning so um, they give me some more pellets as well so we're going to get down there and see what it's like park up i think it's going to take me half the day to get the gear to the lake and set up Fish. Hooked up, it's not a very big one. It's something, and of course the net is out of the way. It's a pretty weird looking one. Let's check it on the mat. It's like a, like a sort of giant crucian shape. Nice to get that first fish out of the way, isn't it? No, it's not a big fish. <laughs> I'm on Mike's Burrow Carp gear, so it's a pretty one way, one way fight. Very sort of crucian carpy that is to me. So, is it a cross between a common and another one? I don't know. I'll tell you what there is. There's a fish called a Prussian carp. Does anybody know about that Prussian carp? Would that be linked to a Prussian carp. It's not quite the right sort of species. Carp, wrong size. But listen, first fish of the day. Going about half an hour and it's on a boilie. I still think it's a funny looking one. Does that, does that fin tell you anything? It just looks very, very crucially. Guys, I've got another one of those carp. I didn't get the action for you because I've been sat here for one, two, two and a quarter, two and a quarter hours for nothing. And I've got another one of these weird ones. Are they just common carp? They seem very high in the back, don't they? They just look crucian to me. They look like a sort of crucian. I don't know. Are they across? Do you know what? I changed the rig. I'm going to show you what I've done. The boilers have got bin. Well, I kept getting bumps on the uh, on the boilies. So I went down to an eight mil pellet. Nothing, nothing, nothing. But I did notice that every time it was a fresh cast out, that I actually got the foot, the only bites. If I sat here and let it all break down, nothing. It's like they didn't just didn't want the boilie. So I rigged up old school one of these feeders. I can squeeze ground bait around. I tried squeezing ground bait around the lead. I didn't use that mesh bag uh, funnel PVA bag system. 
I thought, well, it's so accurate at casting here, I don't really need that. So I've now changed to this feeder, sliding feeder, swivel there, some stroft here about, what is it, I'll tell you what it is actually. I never remember what it is, it is 3.6 kilos. It's very, very fine, size 12 hook here, and I'm using just ground bait paste on the hook. Because I've got no maggots. Let me show you. I've made up a more of a pasty type of ground bait. I squeeze that into the cage feeder. Show you what I'm doing. It was just bizarre that I was getting almost as soon as you hit the water. I get these tappy tweaky bites that obviously initially I thought they were tweaky carp, but they weren't. So a little bit of ground bait paste, just enough to cover the hook. I mean I've put some um, formal uh, scratchings pellets in there, so I'm just going to push that ground bait around the 12 size 12 hook. So I'm actually fishing. It's going to look bizarre. It's going to look bizarre. We just got me the last fish. A ball of ground bait in that feeder, sliding like that, and then paste on the outside as well. So nibbling away at this, I pull it once to bump it to straighten it out. Bits fall off of this, and then this piece of bait actually goes into the little cloud that I've left on the on the lake. But that's theory. All I can say is. I've got it touch ledger in, tiniest little tap holding the rod, nothing on the bobbins yet. Let's get it out again. I'm just basically tightening up. There's a little bit of wind left to right that's actually putting a bow in the line. I'm tightening up until I feel the feeder bump once. Just take the tension and wait for the pull with a little tweak on the line. Well, it's a long time since I stayed overnight. Other than under an umbrella, which is all we used to do, it's just under an umbrella. That's all there was. I've moved swims. Bailiff came round, the two uh, small carp, which I thought looked like sort of cost an accretion carp and a Prussian carp are just F1s but fast growing F1s that's the sound I want to hear that slurping that are deeper so that's what threw me so they're just a plain F1 but he said there are some left in here and he said they're really difficult to net out when they try and do the netting to get them out and he said the carp anglers don't like them but the matchmen do I can see why the carp anglers don't like them it's beep 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 all day long all day long I don't need that tonight so I took a gamble I've had a walk around been a few carp call, not many. Um, I've had a couple of perch. I've relocated as hit the the, um, the boat of place had come down about three or four swims. I've just gone out in the middle and I've got one down the margin. So I've done the same sort of thing, but I saw one fish roll out. That's all I saw was one fish roll out there. I thought, do you know what? I fancy fishing at a bit of distance. So I am here, set up. Wait for this, guys. Don't laugh. Don't fall off your armchair. Don't spill your coffee. Don't knock your beer over. It's taken me 45 minutes to work out how to put up Mike's bivvy. I mean, I'm all set up. You would think, wouldn't you, looking at this little lock, you would think Graham is a real proper carpy. Uh, no, no. I must have moved those rods three times so I realise if I have to dive out, well, there's no rushing at 66, is there? When I exit the bivvy here, it will be hopefully to grab a rod. But over there, I'm just going to zoom in there. I've, I've done the old grain pulling and put some bread in there and it's just got rid of the ducks. Let me just zoom in there. Well, I'm, there you go. While I'm talking, you might see that there. That's how I normally hope to pick a fish up. Because the ducks are... Oh, I said there's one duck coming in. Please don't come in. Please don't. Why don't you just... <laughs> off. Anyhow, yeah, I'll have to try it at night, but there are fish in there. Don't make a very big fish, but it might salvage the trip. So I've now got my boilie rods out. First time I fish with three rods. Well, fresh water anyway. Let me show you these bits over here. Now, nobody tell Michael, these poles here, that it took me 40 odd minutes to work out what they do, right? I've been trying to hammer them into the ground and skewer them into the ground because my glasses tell me that there's a point on them and it's not. Because I thought, these things, I thought it must be like a tent. These things pull it down. So it's taken me all that time. And I pulled one out and thought, oh, there's not a point on them. There's a grip and a grip. I thought, ah. Oh, I see, so it just basically tensions it all rigidly. So what a silly Billy, but don't tell Michael what I've been trying to do with his lovely, beautiful bivvy. There's my two rods. Mike left me one bobbin, it's all his gear. 
that yes you've guessed is mine this yes super duper luxury is mine I've got one just down off that fall and rush there close in because the bailiffs had tried margins and the others are out there in that tree so I've had to rebate relocate and I'm very very hopeful I might pick something up off here but of course the clock's ticking I've got to get my uh, bedding organized It's taken me three journeys to get all this bed. I've got enough food to feed the SAS and the Brecon Beacons for four months, I would think. All this gears, all mics, the baby cradle or whatever it is for returning fish, weighing them, the nappy changing mat, that's there. I've got it, I've got the big net. I've got, I mean, I'm, I'm cool, I've got everything. I've even got, look, a bike because the light's on. Is he going to hook himself? The answer is no. It is not halfway bad. It's out of this freaking wind that will not lay down. We've had, what? I think we've had eight or nine days of this solid. I know because I want to go sea fishing. No, I thought I'd go carp fishing. You can't win, can you? So I've got to get a bed sorted out in here. It's just be how quick I can get out there. So I'd better get the bed put together. <laughs> That's right. That'd be another half an hour, wouldn't it? Well, people, I have the lanyard around my head. There's a carp picking up bits of bread there. Birds seem to have gone to Betty Buys and down here in there as well. I've seen small carp, look, not big carp, not big carp at all. But I want to nail if I can get one of those, at least hook something up and then I can put something on and cook, have a little bit of a cook up, have some food. I'm starting to feel a little bit fragile. I've been going all day. Don't eat much, don't drink much. That fish could turn it around. I'll see if I can get this one hooked up for you. And what I do, so you know, I get rather than break bread up, I keep the crust and then I just snip it. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen it in some of our, our films. I've taken the rig off and I just get a piece of crust. I go through once. There's absolutely nothing on here except a hook. I stretch it a bit so it lays flat that way, so the hook lays flat so you can't see it that way. I'm going to dip it once like this just to get it wet and I'm going to watch between that swim over there and this swim here. This one, I feel, is the one I should be having a look at. Mostly because the net's there. There's my bread. Oh, so much. It's the tree. There's my friend's the duck. Bye. So they don't see this bread. Check the drag. This is a new reel. So what is it? A gear shift 4000. Might even christen it in a minute. Oh, oh, I hear fish. There's the fish, there's the fish, there's the fish. Right down there. There he goes. Oh, I know he bumped off it. He's not stupid, is he? He's not stupid. I've got a finger of two fish here. I'll go in again at the gap. That's on the money. Just down there. Hopefully, you can see it. No. It... Oh, you. It's you. It's you in there that's done it. That bloke with the beer. Look at the size of that swell. They've obviously been fished for before with bugs in crust. There he is guys, one inch. There he is. Spread it out. There we go. Oh, I lost him. Lost him. Son of a <laughs> Son of a <sighs> <sighs> It's going to be one of those days and nights. <laughs> Well, guys, it's time to uh, go in the goodie bag and have something to eat. It's beans. <laughs> Wife's giving me some beans. That's going to be good news in a sleeping bag about three in the morning, won't it? Yes. I won't be cold, will I? It's going to be expanding with gas. Oh, I've got... Uh, oh, dear. She's giving me the <laughs> wrong cam. Uh, beans. <laughs> or... Spag bowl. We'll try some spag bowl. I've got this up as a windbreak. I don't know what else can go wrong today. Lost my carp. 
but there might be another one along. Make sure you take all your litter home, people. So easy, you bring it with you, take it back. Just keep a little plastic bag or something to put the gunky stuff in. What I do is this, I'll make sure I put in there so that it's out of the way and you don't cut yourself. I've got Mike's Primus thing here. We used to have something called a camping gas. How the hell does it work? I've worked out these come around to balance it all. Oh, 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 nothing. Turn it off. <laughs> I'll tell you what will burn well. This, <laughs> this stuff on bushcraft. Oh, God almighty, no hair on the hands. These burn very hot. So, on goes spag bowl. Here's the camera bag to get melted. I'll put this on top, so there's a big bang. When this catches fire, that'll blow up as well. Now, what else do I need? What else have we got in here? Yeah. Spag bowl and hot dogs. Now these are good baits. This is ye old oaks, that one I use. We're not plugging them. Well we are actually, but we paid for that. Um, it might not be a bad idea. Put bung a couple in there, have those, and keep the others for breakfast. And I've got some hook baits. That's not a bad old idea for him. It's not exactly Michelin star, but there we go. Just keep that fluid in there, in the top, so that stops from drying out. Don't leave it outside, because the rats will get it. Just make sure this doesn't burn out. If you have it too hot, it, it'll burn and stick to the bottom of the pan. That one I put back on, because it's free line, just with a piece of bread flake in the margins over there. I've thrown bread here, bread there, but obviously I lost that carp. That's that done, all over by the shout in there. So I'm back down to the boilies, which have sat there for the best part of six hours without anything. I told you, oh my god, I've got it turned down and it's already going to stick to the pan. It's stuck to the pan. Oh, gotta love this outside cooking. That's what I've had all day, and that's those F1s apparently. And the guy said, did say it drives the carp and fisherman mad. Pulls the bobbin up, won't, won't pull on the uh, bait runner, drops it back down. Meantime, it's woken you up at night. It's okay now when I'm cooking, not so good in the middle of the night. So just cutting your sausages up, actually on the ground now, cut the sausages up. They get down the bottom then and they'll cook a bit better. God, times I used to do outside fishing all night, years, many years ago. I hadn't invented bivvies, that's, that's something you guys might want to think about there. You might want to deliberate over that. Life without the mushroom. There was life. Yeah, although I'm not a boiling bivy man, as you well know, I'm trying to do this to get a little film for Mike. <laughs> and it might be the only film. No, of course we've done it before. We, we've done uh, two or three films on fishing with the boilies and staying out all night. It can be good fun on the right night, especially if you catch something. But the longest I've ever stayed awake when I was young, and I mean very young, was it was a place called Tundry Pond and they had wild carp in there, and it was all the rage to catch wild carp. And we used potatoes dug out of the field. Stir this up while I'm at it. We used to go into the farmer's field, dig up the potatoes, not train loads of them, no, dig up the potatoes, parboil them like this, cooking like this, eat a few ourselves, and put a half out with a crust casting support pad on there. I stayed up, wait for this, no word of a lie, two days and two nights, I think I had one hour sleep. At the end of the second day, not only did I feel exceedingly fragile, but I was hallucinating. Have you ever guys ever had that? And the sky and the, and the land on the edge of the horizon and all the trees were moving. Now, there's a lot of guys out there who pay good, mo good money to have that feeling when they smoke that vegetable stuff that they roll up. I got it without that. I got, a, I got it by no sleep and boiled potatoes. So don't overcook it. And the other thing, a lot of the guys in uh, later years used to they used to take caffeine tablets to stay awake at night to sort of combat that. Again, something I've never done, but I know a lot of the specimen hunters were so paranoid about staying up and missing a bite. Some of them, don't forget, no buzzers. Hadn't, they hadn't invented electric by then, I think. 
they'd stay awake and they used to take caffeine tablets, mostly barbell fishing. So there you go. I had done very long sessions, but not in the luxury of one of these. We just used to either put a big heavy trench coat jacket on, plastic bag over your head, I had invented plastic by then, and generally an umbrella. And if you did really tough it out for a day or two days, you just chuck a piece of tarpaulin over the umbrella. And then the luxury came when you have an umbrella that used to have a canvas um, bivy, I suppose, that just laid over the top of the umbrella. And that's all I had for years. Most of the time, I'd just stay out and stay up, because at the end of the day, the time you fight your way out of the sleeping bag, probably miss the run anyway. But of course, now you don't miss the run because you've got all these self-hooking rigs. So the fish hook themselves. The fish do the fishing for you. All you have to do is get out of bed. Years ago, we didn't have these self-hooking rigs. So imagine sitting by a bobbin and you nailed that bobbin the minute it got to the top, otherwise you didn't get the fish. No self-hooking in my time. I think we're getting there with Mike's cooker. Mike's got all the gear and I have to say, it's better than the stuff we had years ago. Much better. Just need a fish to go with it. Carp just moved right over there. You won't see it, right on the point of the island. Sun's going down. Happens every night. And nothing moving on my bread there. It's a funny old night with this wind. I feel a blank coming. All right guys, a little tip there. If you do do this and you put sausages or something, you can pre-cook sausages and bring them in and heat them up like this. Just leave it in there a little bit longer. It can be in with beans, anything like that. Because this is metal, it will be very hot and they take longer to heat through than the spaghetti or beans or whatever you put in there. So just let it sit for a while. It lets it all cool down and you won't, if you've got a moustache, have it explode into combustible flames from the heat off of that when you burn your lips. And here comes the coot. I think he's going back in a nest there. He's not actually taking any bread yet. Shove off. Now this bread's good because it's now it went in there and it's drifting back out again. So I'm hoping later in the evening, even when it's dark, there might be a carp coming in here. Let's have something to eat. Yeah, while I'm eating this, ow, it's hot. While I'm eating this, I have to say what the guys said about the ease for you beginners out there with using um, that sort of mesh tube in PVA as opposed to a solid bag, it is easy. Once you get going, it's easy. And of course you can time up ready. Oh, food. Oh, those, no, F1. Not stupid, it's an F1. He's dropped it again. And that's a big boilie on that one, trying to get rid of the F1s, which he hasn't done. The other thing, a tip for you. We used PVA 40 years ago, but they were all solid bags and we never had the mesh. We used to use a solid one for barbel. Oh God, at least 40 years ago. Uh, with those tubes, make sure if it's drizzling, raining, as soon as you tie the bags up with your bait, you can pre-tie several of them, put it away, keep it dry, keep it, that's why it's in a nice sealed tube. That's a good tube they're in actually. Ah, oh, that's the tonsils done. Guys, you've got a real one. Halfway through the uh, sausage. Held the, held the line up quite a long time. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's a nice fish. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. My God. Let's stay on. I hate to say I'm owed, but I feel I'm owed. getting at this guys I've got no idea I nearly got a Savaloy hot dog segment up my nose shoveled it up joking apart it's a big boil underneath my feet here well oh, guys there's a memory card's gone down on the big camera batteries run out on the other camera I dropped the net I don't even know the fish is still there or not it's gone around the other line it's the biggest cluster known to man how on earth am I going to get this fish with that lot up there This is going to be a cluster and a half. I don't believe I've ever had such a mess like that before. I'm looking at 
two rigs up there. What is that? Some bed in the road. Just need a fish. I just need a fish. Come on, babe. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> oh, he's in. I'm in a mess. Thank you, God. My goodness me. So that one for sure. Absolutely for sure. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. <laughs> he's caught on there. Now, I'm going to pull the mat down a bit because I'm such a tangle. Just hooked on the edge there. Hooked out. There we go, guys. <laughs> a nice chunky one. Look at that across the back. I'd say he's going to be very close to the magic money mark. Look at that light on him there. I'm hoping you got this. God knows what's happened with the cameras. It's not good. A nice big fat carp. And by golly, I was owed get in to return these big ones like this. Ah, oh, that does look nice in the light, doesn't it? Gold. Chunky one. Chunky, chunky, chunky. Bit of a peculiar mouth. It's probably been through the wars a bit, but I'll tell you what. Happy with him. Now here, you need to put them in the, in the baby cradle. Get him in the crash. Just roll him over in the crash. Not a bad idea, really, is it? And that way, when you lift him in the water, you can get him over your third rod. Perhaps not. And then just release him. Out we go. Ah, he's gone. Brilliant. Wow. Scalding hot dogs down the throat. Save the blank. I guess he's around the 10 mark. That'll save me, even if I don't get another one through the night. What am I going to sort that lot out with? Not big fish, but a fish. Did you hear that? Maybe a decent one. The thing is, guys, I'm not on my open rods, I'm on Mike's carp rods. So I'm sort of thrown by the size of the fish. A bit of action here. Could do with Mikey filming this to be honest. I get a real mess. One more is in a real mess. You watch a fishing show, you know what happens. It's the same carp on the board here. I won't be able to sleep all night. talking about all you big carp guys that they catch Gertie the 30 and Nifty the 50. We're talking about youngsters, beginners that want to go and try to catch a bigger carp than normal three to six pounders. And this one, now that's interesting, he's been chewing up half a boilie that I've been cutting up in the scissors, putting in those bags. This one I don't need to weigh, it's a, it's a good double. My, my guess is, tell me peeps, and he's gone now. Let's get a plastic one. I'd say he's 14s, 15s, big across the back. A nice carp. I was really, really thrown out. Okay, tonic immobility. Sorry, pal. Tonic immobility. That's what you do. Carp, fish, any size. Turn him upside down when I talk. He's absolutely fine. That one. I'm thrown out by the carp, which I normally catch carp this size on Avon rods. So that's why it came in quite quickly because I'm applying pressure to Mike's carp rod like that. You'll please notice, carpies, hold them upside down with tonic immobility, calms them right down. Let's get it back. 
into the mother here. I'll tell you what, he's close to weighable this one. Rolling down is 14. Whew. Lovely, lovely jubbly. I fired up the memory card, guys. And I'm hoping you're getting all this. I've got both cameras. Hopefully now, up and running. Oh yeah, nice car. That's a good 14 model tag more. Might be a tag more. Might be. It'd be a bit unwise of me not to weigh that one. I'm in a mess, but I feel better because I've got my third nice car and got the lucky hat on. I wonder if that was what it was. Or was it like that? Just, I always heard that saying, it flies in the top lip or the bottom lip. This one's in the top and it's out. I don't want to get totally covered in gunk, but I'll just show you this guy. This fish guy, just crank that up there. I don't want to put it too high because I'm going to get this. Look at that. Look, I mean... All that grief I've had today, camera chips, I just I can't tell you things that have gone wrong did go wrong, and no fish. And then you walk away with like, well, I haven't walked away yet, three good fish, and look at that setting behind. This one will go, he's very, very close to the 10, but I got a feeling I'll be, I'll be putting him on a scale of nine and a quarter, nine and a half. He could go 10, I'm probably gonna wish I've got the scales. Yeah, I can't be bothered to mess around with this baby cradle, zeroing it, or it weighs two pounds. But nice car, it just shows you. Get those boilies, get down topper, manor and get out there, give it a go. We'll persevere a bit, a bit you know, but, well, happy with that one. Well, cart number three bites the uh, unhooky mat. Now, I can see now, what Kia was telling me in the, uh, in the tackle shop, Get yourself organised. Now, this actually came out, the lead released like it should do. So you have to reset that just in there, pinch it in so it's nice and tight. I've put another boilie on, and I've noticed the last two have come on something more. Live, live system, a 15 mil, 15 mil live system. Kia gave me a couple of uh, baits to try. I just, let's just show you this, guys, just so you know. Yeah, there you go. He sort of sort of red ones and the light ones and the light ones which are called for freezer baits live system whatever that means I have not a oh it's exciting I've not a clue but anyway the last two fish I think come on those light ones it's obviously going to get dark now so that means nothing so there must be something in the flavor but the object of the exercise as you said was to get yourself organized pre-making the bags because if you do it in the middle of the night it's not so easy is it so what I've done I'll get this off there's enough light for you to see this I've pre-made some bags up look when I've kept them in the dry because the dew will come down here if I leave them out like that they're going to get damp they're going to dissolve there's PVA no water no moisture so I've made them up ready so I've got five baits as it were there or ground baits really and then easy peasy I put a new live system boilie on. I don't go through that knot. You know, you, you could put the hook through the knot thinking that's the best best place to put it through. I go through two or three times through that mesh. I just worry that the the knot there, there, that piece, how you can see it here, just might go a bit gluey and gunky when it dissolves and mask the point of the hook, I don't know. And there's the enemy, the ducks. I've got some floating crust down here, but nothing's come up on it after I lost that fish. I've pounded it with ground bait. I've lined up that tree over there, shadow line. Not too worried about distance because it's, I can see where I'm casting. Just a gentle kaboom, really subtle. This old boily fishing with bags is very subtle. Crash. Other people don't move it. I'm gonna move it a foot. Just me. In we go here. Beepity beep beep. On goes much Mike's luxury uh, bobbin indicator. As a, as a, as in contrast to my uh, 
sawn off bottle top doing the same thing obviously bait one on there we go I don't want to lose a rod especially Zim Mike's rods aren't they pretty lights Whee! pretty lights and pretty noise all set guys all set and loaded I've got this one and I've got the a single side hook boilie on that I'm going to change that back to a bolt rig in a second I don't think we're going to do anything on the floating crust that I can see beautiful even absolutely superb now the winds at last dropped another thing guys lights fading just got to know where everything is Mike did give me a, a head torch somewhere obviously it's helpful if you find that uh, there's my PVA keep that handy it's handy if you can find the head torch before it gets dark I wanted to show you this one anyway it's tiny there it is okay this is through night it's through night if you want to know about these Mike's uh, put these on his totally awesome outdoor show and he's lent me this one they're tiny they just have a little button on the side there which you put on like that they weigh next to nothing they got like economy flash strobe really really takes one single battery there ordinary one and that's brilliant for baiting up etc like that in contrast over in my camera bag i have a massive photo floodlight that will do three lakes so i won't be short of light but this is the one i want to use so i'm going to leave that out where i can get to it also yeah baiting need on that for the boilies there's my rig, I'm going to put this on the other rod now. Not going free lining anymore. Let's get this bobbing off. Boys, you might or might not see this. It's not a low light camera, but I'm on again. I'm going to walk this way a bit. I want to keep away from the other line. Whew. Oh man, this one's going well. This one is going well on Mike's rods don't really know these rods I don't know what the limit is oh I've got to get a side strain on him oh no 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 it's all in going across to the right keep him left keep him left walk a bit farther sometimes fish can be walked around as you can see guys a plastic bottle top does the same thing Have a look at this fish. Feels like he could be up near the magic 10-0. I'm hoping you're seeing this. Yeah, common this time. Common. Now I've got a photo flood on the big camera, but in a minute this uh, GoPro one head cam is probably too low for it now. That's your light conditions. in the rod <laughs> how it's turned round unbelievable oh, I've got a collection of bobbins there I'm not a lover of this close mesh net I really am not I'd like to see the old fashioned open weave ones that's what I'd like to see him come on baby just get in do us a favour it looks about eight-ish not as big as the others but listen, biggest can't be choose, I say, guys. Oh, yeah, that's bigger. Do you know what? I keep underestimating these on this rod. Nice common carp. Mark on his back there. He's, what do you reckon, eight ish, something like that? Get out towards eight. Nice, decent mouth and nice big, big scales on him there. Brilliant. Nice fish. Let's get those little bags out again. Well, here we go, guys. This angler's just packing up. You've had fish to what is it? Just up the road from me. Charlotte Oakford. And, and what was the biggest one you had tonight? Oh, um, 17? 17 and a half, yeah. That's good, good fish, yeah. So I'll just get a gentleman the rod so I can get you guys some different action. And you can only catch carp like this when you've got your gear on your back ready to go home, look. 
Yes, right. That's it. Here we go. Because I won't be able to do this filming when it's dark on my own and Mike's not there. Ah, we're just standing here talking about all the different up. rigs. Looks like a leather, maybe a mirror, I don't know actually. Do they get leathers in here, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me get the net for you, brilliant. Yeah, that's right. I... Do you want me to do that? Yeah, do it all for us, brilliant, yeah, if you can. I can give the prize a, a bit of a different angle. I haven't been... Uh... That's a good angle for us. This one yeah, on. that's it, that's brilliant, thank you very much. That's Mike's rod, so I'm not used to uh, mm -hmm. playing there on these carp, big carp rods. You know, I don't think it's a particularly heavy one, but it seems very tippy to me. I mean, what uh, what gear do you use for this sort of stuff when you're on this I, lake? I use a, a barbel rod, actually, which is even a little bit lighter than this one. Ooh, he's going a bit... He's... Like but a sort yeah, of uh, heavy haven, like a heavy haven rod or something like that? Or, no, well, or a bit it's, heavier than no, that? No, it's, it's specifically made, I think it's a Drenum one, it's specifically made for barbel, but I just find that if you use a really heavy carp rod it's like hauling them in and it's, yeah it doesn't seem very sporting you know i know what you mean yeah but i know exactly on the other mean. hand the barbel rod it's, it's got enough oomph to get a, get a decent double out that's what it's it just realized he's been hooked this but he's not huge but he's uh... i'll cut around the other side i think he's a bit camera shy this one this one isn't it yeah <laughs> i've got the small camera but he's uh the light's gone for that now so and nobody around me they won't be bothered by my Huge floodlight. <laughs> oh, he's, fight, he's, fight, he's fighting better here than he did out when I hooked yeah, him up. That's true, actually, yeah. I think he doesn't like the look of the net. And they do go to, uh, what, just on the 20, they tell me? Yeah, there? I'd say you get some low, low 20s, yeah. Oh, good man. Thank you very much for that one. Okay. Thanks for wheeling him in for us. He's close to 11 and he's just got a few scales there. Yeah. Quite it's something you don't actually see much now, is it? The, the leather carp. Yeah. Oh, you get you get them here, definitely. Yeah. Oh, you do get leathers in here, do you? The, the bigger one I had tonight had a really dark head, almost like a black head. Yeah. You know? And the, the commons are... The commons seem to go... They seem to fight better. I don't, I don't know why that is. Yeah, but, we found that, yeah. yeah. And in the net as well. Just generally on fisheries are... The uh, commons can go quite well behaved. He is, isn't he? Yeah. A bit yeah. of a poser, I think. That's he is that one, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I'll just do a little zoom on his head for guys. Now in this light <laughs> he looks he looks like a ghost cart, but he's not. Yeah, really? but, it, but it's just in this light he looks yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you very much. That's okay. Let's get him calm. Lift him very slowly. Got beautiful markings on that one, but that is almost a fully scaled mirror, is it not? He's twitchy, he's definitely twitchy. Get him straight back. Beautiful fish. Number six. My goodness me. I feel it's going to be a sleepless night. I wish that guy helped me with the last fish. Came back. I feel I could use his work. Use his work helping here. Beauty. Let's get him back. Don't know what to say, guys. It's two thirteen. Fourteen pounds. Nice fish. I barely got my head on the pillow and it was gone again. I've got to stop using those poor ears. I can't make these bags up quick enough. That's where you got to be careful and keep them dry. as well so keep that tube dry. Put some of those in. Eight. I've got many boys left so I can't put too many in. A few trout pellets. Some of my magic ground bait. Shake it all down. Like this. I find if I put the ground bait in first it tends to sort of clog it a bit. So I'm putting the uh, pellets in first, squeeze it all down like this, 
put a spin in it and the knot it's cold you wouldn't think so supposedly the English summer got a pretty handsome jacket on which I use out of the boat it's cold the wind's gonna pick up again I feel A lot of fish. That's it. Tie that second knot so you're ready for the next bag. Snip off. Put your hook through the bag a couple or three times, that's what I'm doing. Make sure the lead pinched it, that swivel's pinched up in there and heave the lot in the wild blue yonder carp central You guys might be able to see the mist coming across the water now. It shows you it's cold. All set guys. Back to the sleeping bag. There are many, many, many pensioners that are doing this to me. It's uh, five o'clock in the morning, guys. I'm sure, you can imagine what the uh, sleep's been like. Don't ever put these boilies on the hook if you want a good night's sleep. What a dawn!
just under 11 pounds, 10.14. Beautiful. That is to say, well, the old saying, I can't even speak, I'm so tired. That's worth getting out of bed for. Falling out in my case. <laughs> what a session. about two years since I've done a, an all night session that was with Mike beautiful this morning what a thumping headache though <laughs> I've only got two bags left one place there's only one place for them guys out there It's absolutely madness. The lens is filthy, I don't know if you can see anything. It's just like fish droplets of slime all over it. I'm gonna try to clean it, it's got another carp on here. What I'm trying to do guys is the last of my bag trying to get it out before the sun actually comes up on the water. I think that might be the kiss of death. Though. Put some crust out there as well. This is a nice car.
could be fishy the trip boys. Oh yeah, this is the kitty. This is the one. <laughs> I know where this one's going. 21 and three quarters. But, unfortunately for me, the net weighs two pounds. How close is that, guys? It's virtually a 20. If I ate a few more of those boilies, it would be. Oh, God, you get it? My elbows are crucifying me. People, totally awesome for carp session. 19 pounds, 12 ounces. Fantastic session, that is. Four ounces short of a 20 pounder. Let's get it back. You know that film, have you seen that film in a series on TV called The Walking Dead? I think they based it on me. I just got another car after the car after the car. Let's get clipped up, I'll show it to you. It's a pretty one, this one. That's 13 pounds. So that's an 11 pounder. Take two off. Wow. Look at that fish, that is one fat fish. Oh. And the downside is I've got no more bags left, unfortunately. Here he goes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, it's on camera as well. <laughs> on camera as well. What a dangler. I mean, oh, mustn't use these technical bobbins. Look, oh, must have the latest. Let's see what this one is. That was an 11 pounder. What is this kitty gonna be? Oh man, so cream cracker. I can't tell you how tired I am. Just gotta keep going. I just out there, I just pounded it with the with ground bait and a few small pellets. This one is going to want to go out and to the left. Oh, common this time. Hey, common. Look at that, guys. Just look at this through there. Dappled effect. Going all arty now. Where's my net? This is the epic session. To end all epic carp sessions. Oopsie. All right. Oh, they're killing me. Oh. Come on, fair. They just give up. Why do they fight so hard? I only want to film them. For goodness sake. <laughs> I'll just tell you what, guys, that's a 10 or 11 pound of one, I think. One more roll, he's in. He is in. Oh, I can hardly bend down. That fish is a lot smaller. I wonder if I'm going to get the small ones during the day now. Come on, Carl. Oh, about eight ish, I'd say. Ah, oh, damn. This is a position you probably haven't seen me in for the last God knows how long. Actually, I've had to try and have a lay down. I had to put the big camera in here because the dew on here is just too much. I can't leave it outside. You might, might wake up and he's gone. But um, risky leaving it out in the dew as well. But I mean, look, I'm no carp fisherman. Okay, it's carp. Of course, I've done carp all my life, but not the not the mushroom, not the bivy. I have to say, very comfortable in here. Probably don't put it up right. Michael told me that. But look at the view, guys. This is the view. This is my office this morning, this is my office view. 
Well, I'm working, aren't I? I mean, I am working, for goodness sake. Oh, gee. Missed that one. Which one was it? That one. What I've done is I've, um, I've run out of that mesh stuff that they give you. I've got, I've got no more of that. That's all gone, you know, the netting, PVA netting. So I've mixed up some ground bait and I'm squeezing that around the lead itself so it all, they can nibble away at it. It's a bit like a method feeder, really. Let them nibble, nibble away. And let's be interested and see if they do actually, well, I know it works, so I just had a bite on that. Could have been a liner, could have been a liner. But nevertheless, I'm going to shorten that up a bit. Well, what a view, guys. The little mosquitoes in the sun there, the wind's down, the world is good, and do you know what? I know it sounds dark, but it makes me want to go barbel fishing. Have a, have a bloody rest. It's a short enough a tad. Got young more hens this year's more hens going, scratching around, looking for people's ground bait. Most of my ground bait is out there, guys. I think I've actually, actually got the whole lake to myself. So no one's gonna worry about all the ground bait that's in my hair and the state I'm in. Oh dear, oh dear, I feel like that sort of, like Ed Stafford, he does all these talks he, in, the, in his camps and that. Been up, at least he, keep, he probably gets some sleep, old Ed. I've had none, none, nothing. I wonder if I do the second night, no, if I start hallucinating like I told you about early on. Let's see if I can just nod off, just grab half an hour would be nice. Whew. Guys, it's never ending, it's never ending. It's ten past nine in the morning. I've had about 30 minutes sleep. The boss came round with a 12 gauge, get rid of some unwanted bird that was tangled somewhere. And just so he's dozing off again, locked up on another carp. Just when I thought it was all over. Tell you what, as pretty as it is, it's not as nice as it was that first 20 minutes of dawn. This is a nice carp too. Oh yes, oh my God, oh my God. I can't afford to go to sleep. It's in. Whew. Guys, I'm gonna tell you, this is carp. Big carp, number 19, with the two little ones, that's 21, I'm not even counting those, but 19 carp to nearly 20 pounds. Phenomenal, and this is a double as well. Look how big this one is across the back there, guys. Double figure fish, I'm guessing. 12 pounds, she's been coughing up bits of pellet there. Just take a look at him if we can. He might go mad. There is the fish, and there is the setting. My goodness me, what a session! What a session! And this one I'd nearly call a saddleback. See the line across there? If you didn't have the scales here, 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 and there, that's what years ago we used to call a saddleback. Pretty sure they know they're gonna go straight back. There he is. Gone. 19 carp, my God. Oh man, what a night. No sleep, maybe 30 minutes of sleep. It is now, sun's well up. Well, I say finished, the rods are still in, but I feel I'm pretty well stuffed now. 22 carp to 19 pound, 12 ounces. I've never had a session like that carp fishing. I've had bigger weights of carp, 
smaller fish, lots of, but just the numbers of 10 double figures. Unbelievable. Time for some food. Hopefully almost, I hope the rods don't go off. And what a day it is. All right, let's get the kettle on, get some food going. Oh, God. Don't get old, guys. It's not good news, you can hardly move. Oh, I'm gonna pay for this later. As you know, I try and give you a few tips what I do. If I leave my chair out like this, I fold it down so I don't get damp and dew all over it. Might be a little tip there for you. And then, I know the sun's out. Won't be too far away from those rods. Now I guess you guys know it, all carp guys, but if there are beginners and that's what this is, a beginner's guide for people who want to try a bit of um, carp fishing for bigger fish. Always put your food and your bait inside your bivvy with you, because you do get rats come around. Not all fisheries, I didn't hit any here last night. They do come around. I've heard people had their bivvy chewed into during the night and people will have rats running across the top of them. I've heard of rats going inside sleeping bags I mean, I was just so busy last night playing fish, there's too much movement around, but when it's quiet, they might come out. So put your food and your bait in the bivvy out the way. Now it's morning time, I'm gonna put the food, yes, in my tummy. Another tip, there's another tip, you see, because I've done a lot of outdoorsy stuff. Put a towel or something around the top of your head because you lose so much heat out of your head, you will get a headache. Don't let a draft go on your neck, don't let a draft go on your head. Small tip, even in that bivvy, you know, you think, well, I'm out of the wind. It takes a little crack like this, just here, by your head. It goes on your head, you will wake up with a nice stiff neck and a thumping headache. And you haven't even enjoyed it to get a thumping headache. It's a tough life, this filmmaking. I mean, it's hard work. There's not many women that are going to take a meal out of that. Now, another tip. You can get that Biles disease from rats urine in water, I'm not saying it's here, it's on most places at some stage or other do get it, from washing your hands and it gets into a cup. Therefore, I do not wash my pans out or cups or mugs in the lakeside. I will in the sea, but not in the lakeside. Bring a big, nice big can of water, rinse it out, and whatever's left in there, don't worry, because I'm going to screw it up and mess it up again, because I'm going to be using the beans and a few more of those Savaloy hot dog segment things. What you can do is, you want to, if you're a bit twitchy about getting bugs and bacteria, just put some of the boiling water in there, swill it around, and that'll kill any bugs off. Me, I'll just cook them and eat the bugs as well. Obviously I'm going to cut up those remaining hot dog segments. I could go for three of those. Oh, pour the juice over your shoe and your sock, that's nice, isn't it? They go in the saucepan as well. Cut them up and they'll heat up better. Don't forget, you can eat these cold as well. They're cooked. Just got to warm them up. Wind's coming up again. Okay, there's that done. Now. You're thinking, i just seen him make that tea. I bet that milk's rancid. No, because I put mine in a miniature small flask to keep it cool. Flask must have fish on it, guys. Identification purposes, of course.
dear God. The hot dog is fine. <laughs> the beans. I can't for the sad with that beans there. Oh, it's a regurgitated beans and stuff because you can't beat it. Puke it up, eat it, just like a dog does when they're sick. Guys, it's baking hot. Still right off here. I don't really see. Very bad news for me, and especially wearing polarizing glasses. That's right, I'm starting to see carp everywhere. I've packed everything away, and there's an outside chance, get this head cam on, I might get a tape off the top for you. They're going to be twitchy, spooky, very, very hot. But we'll give it a go. I'm seeing big fish move over here. I mean, real big fish. You need to see them. I just put it right on their nose. There's three or four rushes at uh, sideways there. Quite a big double by the look of it. You can't possibly use light line in a situation like the man. There's a big fish there. I think my bread's too wet. Bait up right behind here. I'm not going to scatter any loose stuff in. I'm going to try and pinch that over that black hook. Just wet it out of out of their sight. Right on it. That's how we do it, guys. This one. Oh man, keep on the top, might get murly. Just off my neck, missed him, missed him, rushing, rushing. Not good. Got him. Let's <laughs> whiz him down the mat, guys. <laughs> guys, it's about. Can you tell me? He looks around. 12. 12 pounds or so. Man alive. 23 carp, 11 doubles. That's ridiculous. I can't even go home now. Well, I've seen bigger fish than this there. Wow. That was what you call bonus going home fish. Probably one in front of me. It's not falling, man. It's not falling. Look at that one, look at that one ladies. About 12 and a half, 13 pounds I say. What if it's me looking down on me? The world above must also be. This could go on for infinity.